Think about the moments in your daily life. Waking up sleepy to the sound of an alarm clock, moving to the destination by transportation, using smartphones to check notifications and to get in touch with each other. These actions are very natural and essential part of our life. However, on the other part of the globe, there is a group of people living totally different lifestyle than us. Diving into the sea, catching sea animals, and traveling by the wooden boat. These adventurous people are called the Mokan. Mokans are the hunter-gatherers who hunt under the sea. Hunter-gatherers are the group of individuals who gather food source from foraging, which means to collect wild plants and pursue wild animals. Most of them follow the nomadic lifestyle, constantly moving to a new place whenever the environmental sources run out. Mokan people are semi-nomadic, moving from sea to land during the moons and storm season. Hunter-gatherers make up 0.005% of today's population and are discovered in various regions such as Arctic, Southern Asia, Oceania, and Africa. There are 35 different tribes of hunter-gatherers dwelling just in Southeast Asia where Mokan people could be found. About 4,000 years ago, Mokan people migrated from Southern China to Thailand and Myanmar. They live in the Morigui Archipelago, a group of 800 different islands in the Andaman Sea, owned by both Myanmar and Thailand. They live 8 months of the year on a boat called Kabang, which is a wooden boat with a small house. For the other 4 months, including the monsoon storm seasons, they live on the nearby islands of Morigui Archipelago. Using nets and traps as hunting materials, they hunt fishes, mollusks, and sea animals. They commonly hunt sea cucumbers, parrotfish, octopus to eat, while oysters are gathered to trade with Chinese traders' rice. They are incredibly smart, utilizing 28 different plants as medicine, 53 on housing, and 42 on handicrafts. In total, the Mokan are capable of using over 120 different breeds of plants for their benefits. As can be seen, the Mokan have a unique and interesting lifestyle that cannot be found elsewhere. However, as time passes, the world is threatening their lifestyle. As Thailand's fishing industry expands and rises as one of the 10 largest in the world, sea animals Mokan used to hunt are disappearing. 30% of Thailand's fishing industry occur in the place where Mokan live. Also, due to the increase in military tension between Thai and Burma over Andaman Sea, Mokan get restricted from a vital trading and fishing zone. Under those circumstances, over 1,500 of 2,500 population left the tribe and have been civilized into poor Thai villages. Now, about 800 of Mokun still follow the traditional lifestyle. As it is shown in the guns, germs, and skills, 12,000 years ago, the first hunter-gatherer groups who settled in the fertile crescent of Middle East had to travel to find a new habitat because of the crescent being dried up. For the Mokun's case, they are not only considering to move their habitat, but also to change their lifestyle completely due to the impact of civilized society apart from them. Some of the Mokan children even started schooling. Mokan parents' point of view has shifted throughout the years. They no longer wish their child to be the best hunter, but instead hope for the young generation to become fully Thai. With over half of the population being reduced, the future of the Mokan is insecure. In fact, Mokan people are on the edge of being totally forgotten, and the biggest factor that threatens them is us, the civilized society. The unsolved question remains, yet it has to be solved speedily. Is it truly ethical to let the civilized society's development continue as the way it is? Or is it now the time for us to consider and help Mokan preserve their culture?